In this video, I'll talk about Le Ch uh, Chatelet's principle. Uh, it says that if you have a system at equilibrium and you change it somehow, then you'll shift the equilibrium uh, in such a way that you counteract the change. Uh, that's actually easy, most easily demonstrated by an example. So let's say I have uh, A and B in equilibrium, as you see here, and the equilibrium constant is 2. I just picked that as an example. So uh, let's say that at equilibrium, uh, you have 2.5 molar concentration of A and twice that of B, so that your equilibrium constant is 2. So that's one way to achieve this equilibrium. Now let's say I add more A, so that before equilibrium, the concentration of B is now 1. So the question is then, what happens uh, to the equilibrium because of this addition of B? And so that we can see here uh, below. Right, I set up uh, the equilibrium equation. Uh, every time I get rid of some b, right, I get some a. Uh, and that equation here has to be, that ratio here has to be 2, right, because the equilibrium constant is, is always 2. So if you uh, solve this equation, you'll find that x is 0.17 molar, so that means a is 0 0.42 and b is 0 0.83, 83, right? So you get, it shifts so that you get more A, right, and less B. So one way to write this is like this, where you use an unequal, an unequally sized arrows in the equilibrium symbol, right? So this symbol here means that the equilibrium shifts towards A, towards reactants, because we added more B, we added more product. So that's, that, in a nutshell, is Le Chatelet's principle. Okay, so here I have another equilibrium. Uh, now A is uh, the reactants again, and I now have B and C as products. Um, so this is at equilibrium, and Let's say I, I place this in an open container and I let half the water evaporate. So what will happen according to Le Chatelet's principle? So press the pause button, think about it, and when you're ready, when you think you have the right answer, press play again. Ready? Okay, so the answer is B. The uh, shift of the equilibrium is towards reactants. So why is that? Well, evaporation increases the, the concentrations, right? That's, that's pretty obvious. So uh, you lose half the solvent, A gets more concentrated, B and C gets more concentrated. So the shift is to increase concentrations. So to decrease the concentration of particles, uh, you shift the equilibrium from products, which has two particles, to reactants, which has one particle. Right? So one way to think about it is that the evaporation leads to an increase in concentration, and that can be counteracted by shifting the equilibrium towards the side with the fewer number of particles. Uh, a more quantitative way is down here. So you have your expression for the equilibrium constant. Half the solvent evaporates, so your concentrations double. Okay, and because you have two product molecules and one reactant molecule, that means that the equilibrium constant, or the this ratio, is now too large compared to the equilibrium constant. You're out of equilibrium. Okay, so the concentrations must change in order for the equilibrium constant to decrease. Okay. And so uh, that's done by decreasing B prime, so the new equilibrium concentration, and C prime, the new equilibrium concentration of C, and increasing this. Right? So decreasing the numerator, increasing the denominator, that will decrease K again to the constant correct equilibrium value. 